and I am really excited to welcome um, our panel members, Carrie Byrne with the Long Distance Care Grandparent and Donnie Davis, the founder of the Gaga Sisterhood, to lead us in a discussion on grandparenting. And uh, I intentionally made this first discussion on grandparenting a grandparenting roundtable. So I hope that Donnie and Carrie can bring up some topics that may strike your interest. But if there's something related to grandparenting and you're in the audience that you want to talk about, this is a roundtable. Jump in and and share. Um, and then just like solo aging, hopefully this can be a continuing thread where we have some ongoing discussions moving into the future on this very important topic. And, um, you know, um, so let's let's dive into this and uh before we dive into the discussion let's get to know the two of you a little bit better so uh carrie um you're the founder of the long distance grandparent but tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to um uh what you, what you're doing right now well first of all thank you so much steve for putting this together i have been excited for this discussion with you and also to have donnie here uh, who is one of my grandparent colleagues and now friends in this space. I'm going to start off with something a little bit unconventional and to tell you about myself, kind of what I was supposed to become uh, versus what I have become. Because when, and it's relevant in particular to this audience, we're talking about retirement living and senior living. I started off, I was, you know, now almost 30 years ago, quite a keen uh, university student. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Maybe you have grandchildren in your lives who are struggling. They don't know what they want to do. I have a niece who has the same situation going on right now, doesn't know what she wants to be. I knew that I wanted to be a child psychologist. I am not a child psychologist, but I knew that I wanted to be one when I was 19. What changed is that I started off this first year of university and I was also working full time. So it was a tight, it was a scheduling situation and I needed an elective. So I took a course on a Wednesday night at seven o'clock and it was called Introduction to Gerontology. I had no idea what, what gerontology was. Uh, it's called, it, it is the study of the aging population. And I thought, great, seven o'clock, I can get that time off work, off I go. I'm sitting in class and I was also, as I mentioned, a bit of a keener and the professors offered a uh, bonus points if we went and volunteered uh, at what at the time was called a nursing home. I can do that. Uh, so I showed up and I was paired with this older woman and everything changed from that time because she had been living, as she disclosed to me, as our time uh, together kind of became more frequent, she'd been living in an abusive relationship and uh, was now kind of free and was having this rebirth. And so I used to pick her up in my little like bright blue Dodge Colt. It was probably against every insurance policy that this institution had. We would drive over to the shopping center, go to the dollar store, eat together. And so I, I switched everything. And from that moment, I kind of went into like gerontology wasn't very common then, uh, but everything I studied from that point forward was about aging older adults. I was endlessly fascinated. Uh, about the stories, kind of, um, you know, all of it. And so I thought I was going to be a tenure track professor and went all the way. I did a PhD, I did a fellowship. And then I realized I was actually quite unsatisfied with publishing things that didn't seem to impact things immediately in people's lives. I became a mother, uh, had worked in a tech startup and kind of got the entrepreneurial bug. I was able to see how I could take research evidence, sit down and talk to a developer they would put it into a product or service. This was another amazing moment in my life. Uh, when I became a mother, I like to say that I birthed six long distance grandparents in the process. And that's really how the long distance grandparent came to be because I knew that I needed to work hard. And they were all working hard and very interested in having a relationship with my children. And we were all at a distance. And so I have basically who I am. I'm a mother, I am an entrepreneur, and I am a passionate advocate uh, for the importance of the relationship between grandparents and grandchildren. Great. And then I'm just, uh, I just dropped in 
your website to the chat and I just wanted to share the screen here where folks can um, uh, get more information today on um, on what you're offering and, and join your community. Okay, well, we're going to get back to you, Carrie. But before we do that, I, I let's meet Donnie and Carrie. I have to thank you because Carrie and I connected and we were talking about this discussion and I said, hey, if you've got any other colleagues, we could make this a panel presentation. And Donnie, I mean, before I even finished that sentence, your name popped out. And I know why, because I had the opportunity to speak with you briefly. So um, uh, I'd love for you to share your story um, and uh, a little bit about what led you to the Gaga Sisterhood. Oh, thank you, Steve. And thank you, Carrie, for connecting us all. It's great. I'm, I've really been looking forward to this. It's really my passion to talk to other grandparents about grandparenting and listen to what they have to say. I always like to introduce myself and say, I'm Donnie and I'm Gaga. <laughs> and what that means is that I am crazy enthusiastic for my grandchildren. I was blessed 19 years ago to be standing at the foot of my daughter's hospital bed when she gave birth. And so I was the first one to see my grandchild enter the world and it was the most miraculous moment of my life. And I truly went gaga. I leaped in the air and I just was so excited. And then when I came back down to earth, I realized I was not the first grandma or grandpa to feel this way. In fact, every grandparent I talked to, especially grandmas, were just as gaga as I was. And then the second thing I realized was that parenting today is so different from how I raised my children, the, the parents of these grandchildren of mine. And I knew I had to talk to some other grandmas. And so I founded the Gaga Sisterhood in 2003. And now that, that infant that I saw is a sophomore in college, which is just incredible to me. And I saw in the chat that someone else has a 19 year old granddaughter in uh, at Southern Methodist University, which is so exciting because it's really fun to have grandchildren of all ages. I've really enjoyed being a grandparent all these years and I keep on learning more things. And my mission in the Gaga Sisterhood is to inspire grandmas to keep on growing and learning along with our children and grandchildren so that we can be our best grandma selves. And there's a lot involved in all of that. And I'm, I'm sure we'll get into that conversation today. I, I love it. And uh, I, I just love how both of you described um, your experience and and building communities out of um, passion and need and your own personal experience. This is uh, this is really hats off to you. And um, and I dropped I dropped both of their their links into uh, um, chat, and we'll make sure that um, we give you a contact info. And this is being recorded, so you can share it with somebody if uh, they're not able to. Uh, participate live like we are today. So um, what, I, what I'd love for the two of you to do is to just let's kind of like dive into some, what are some insights and things that, um, and, and wisdom that you've sort of gleaned um, as leaders in, in this space um, that you could share with the audience. And I want to remind the audience that this is interactive. So Anything that, that Carrie and Donnie say, feel free to jump in with a question, sharing you know your insight on, on this topic. Um, it's kind of like a tennis match. I'll go back to Carrie here. If you, if you want to go first, Carrie, and kind of give us uh, a little insight on some of the, the chatter in your community. Sure, Steve. Just uh, I wanted to share a couple of slides, actually, if you just give me one second. Oh, great. I'm going to do that. So the joys of technology. Let's see if it'll pull this up for me. Um, what I 
So there's a lot of chatter in my community. I hear from uh, long distance grandparents daily <laughs> about some of these struggles, uh, some of the joys of grandparenting from a distance. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is highlighting you know, the importance of this relationship, but also letting people know that there are a lot of grandparents. So I hear from grandparents who often feel invisible in their families, um, that they are looking, you know, especially from a distance uh, when you don't get to see them often, that you can feel that you're not part of the family or that you have to work much harder to be part of the family. But here's the thing, there are almost a billion grandparents in the world. And I have 1 billion up there, but I am a research scientist. It is almost 1 billion, uh, according to estimates, over 70 million in the US. I'm here in Canada, we have seven and a half million. And you can expect to enjoy a 20 plus year relationship uh, with them. And so we, there's some researchers actually here in Canada who look at the kind of expansion of healthy grandparenthood. And so there's been this expansion in life expectancy, in particular at 65, um, but also an expansion in healthy grandparenthood. So there's a lot of time to have this relationship. The other thing is that this is more than a nice to have. And in some of our conversations and talking with Steve and Donnie, I kind of say that sometimes we don't focus on grandparents, I think because we just think that this relationship is nice to have. Oh, isn't that a sweet relationship? You know, like there's a lot of ageism, uh, a lot of things come into play here, but it's more than a nice to have. And so I just highlight this slide for you because these are all the things that a relationship with the grandparent can influence. I have all the references if you want them. If you are in an organization where you'd like some of the references to these studies, then please do reach out. I'm happy to share them with you. But it's everything from pro-social behaviors to strangers, right? So if you are closer to your grandparent, you are going to rate higher um, as an adolescent, as kinder, more generous, less depression, like there's some stuff around mental health, higher well-being, um, and views on aging. So what we found that if you have a high quality relationship uh, with a grandparent, you're less ageist. And so, you know, this is not an insignificant relationship. And it's why I'm so delighted to be here talking about it today, but also that grandparents want to have this relationship. And so 81% say they play an important role in their grandchildren's lives. 53% are comfortable giving advice or talking to grandchildren about morals or values. Anyways, I share that because I just like to set the stage um, to kind of highlight why this is important and why we need to talk about more issues related to grandparenting. You're just on mute. <laughs> Yep, there I am. Yeah, it's because uh, sometimes I get so excited here and uh, I I end up saying something and cutting our panel members off. Um, th this is great, great discussion points. And it's it truly is amazing. And the, if if any of you out there, if you're in business, if you're if you're a grandparent and you search up the stats like that, uh, Carrie shared, there's so many mind blowing stats on uh, on grant grandparents. The fact that I think the one that I always quote is 75% of people over the age of 65 are grandparents. Um, and the the other thing, Donnie, you talked about it is the varying ages of like when we're a parent, it's usually in this sort of tightly confined you know, we have kids every every other year, and I know I'm drawing a stereotype, but as grandparents, so many grandparents have grandchildren from newborn infants to college graduates. And um, <laughs> before the pandemic, I did a, uh, a live event once around the holidays to help grandparents figure out um, uh, gift ideas, because just thinking about that and having knowledge of what these different age ranges might want is is interesting so um but but uh donnie you're um share with us a little bit about the chatter in your community and the things that that are going on there well one of the biggest things that comes up with grand grandmas because i deal mostly with grandmas it's an organization for grandmas but is uh expectations and boundaries I think that sometimes, especially new grandmas, make the mistake of thinking that the relationship is all about the grandchild. 
But really, the most important relationship is the relationship with your grandchild's parents. And getting that off to a good start can sometimes mean sitting down before that grandchild is even born and having a conversation about what are your expectations in this relationship that we're about to embark on. And it's quite a journey to become a grandparent nowadays. And what do you expect of me? What are, maybe talk about your own wishes. I, I would love to visit regularly or I would love to help you out or maybe the parents have expectations that are different. So having these, and then once you have had these discussions, then sometimes grandmas feel, well, I've heard them say they feel like a doormat sometimes because they help so much and they don't feel appreciated. So these are some of the ideas. The other is really understanding the parents' methods of parenting. And this is very new to a lot of grandparents. It was new for me because my, my daughter uh, chose to use attachment parenting. And so what she did was she wrapped this infant of hers in a this big Moby wrap, it's called, and carry the baby around all the time. And it was so new to me. And then my daughter would complain about how tired she was. And it would be obvious to me that she'd never put the baby down. And I wanted to say that, but I wasn't sure if I should. So understanding what is important, what are the values that the parents are wanting to promote in their family and learning those and being curious in a non-judgmental way. Great points, and they intersect with some of the comments that I'm I'm seeing here. Um, so let's 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 dive into a couple of these, um, and uh, and I think we can get the ball rolling on some really thoughtful discussion. Um, the now Susan says I've got three grandkids in Michigan, two in Virginia. <laughs> you know, and do you, Carrie, do you have any stats on like? the average amount of grandchildren that uh, people have? About four these days, kind of on four. average. Okay. Um, and uh, the portal has been an incredible way to connect with them. We can talk, sing songs, read stories. Since the younger ones rarely sit still, the porter's camera follows them, so they're always in view. So this is clearly a long distance grandparent here. And the the product is called the portal. Um, is that something that you all are familiar with? And I guess Carrie from the and and Donnie from the long distance grandparenting perspective, are there some preferred um, platforms? And and how can we connect our our generations via technology? Yeah, so I'm I'm happy to address this, um, and I also want to make sure that we address kind of Barbara's comment about some of the downsides or the. Oh challenges. no, we're going to get to Barbara's. I I, I, I don't okay. worry, we're going to get to everything. I saw Barbara's; it's a good one. Yeah, um, yes, and I see this um, kind of grief in grandparenting uh, when the relationship isn't kind of what you thought it was going to be, um, and then also, of course, um, extenuating circumstances like Barbara's. So, okay, so the Facebook portal. Uh, there's a Facebook portal, an Amazon portal. It's great. I mean, a lot of the grandparents that I work with use it, especially when you have very young children, uh, because of course they, they like to move, right? And so I describe it as like a whirlwind situation when you are FaceTiming with a three, four, five, sometimes even six or seven year old. Um, so those are, those are great um, things to use if the parents are willing, um, if you can afford to use them. They go on sale every once in a while. Uh, and it really is just this camera that sort of follows them around. Are you pulling it up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, this is the Facebook meta portal here. And um, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Yes. This is showing how you, you can see on the screen how she's walking around the room and she's being followed. So a little bit different than sort of this Zoom static camera that we're using. So great. Um, well, and I think that, you know, so there are benefits to both, right? So I often, you know, encourage grandparents to meet 
the kids and parents where they're at. Um, you know, if the parents aren't willing or you're not going to be having a portal in your life, you can have wonderful calls in a static situation uh, if you prepare. And so this is a lot, you know, there's tons of stuff on um, on my blog. Just go to the longdistancegrandparent.com, go to the blog section. Uh, you can download this free video guide uh, where I give you ideas about how to actually engage with children. Because, you know, building on Donnie's point about the parents, one of the things that I've really come to understand over the last uh, couple of years and working with long distance grandparents is that this is new for parents too. This idea that you can build a relationship from a distance, that you can have meaningful connections on a video chat is really new. It's not something that most people at this point in their lives who are mothers and fathers grew up doing with their grandparents. So the grandparents of today are very much blazing the way uh, in terms of this, you know, this connection. And there's all kinds of silly things that you can do. Like I always talk about, you know, who would you rather talk to if you got into a video chat and you were small, um, you know, me or me, you know, and you kind of just like, you know, gla- like glasses using different kind of props. I encourage everyone to have a good, call it a Skype grab bag. We use Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, um, whatever. All the grandparents seem to use something different. Um, but you want to have things prepared, questions to ask them. Would you rather questions, jokes, those kinds of things. So, you know, these uh, technologies are fantastic. Um, but I always just think that as long as you can get a video connection going, um, then, you, you know, you can make a lot of headway towards nurturing a strong relationship. And um, great, great. And thanks, Susan, for uh, maybe we'll do a discussion on the portal. And I'm, I'm curious to learn a little bit more about that product. But the uh, um, Donnie, you you started the Gaga Sisterhood in, um, I believe you're in California. And it was just, they were sort of live in-person support groups, correct? And then the pandemic came around and now you're worldwide. Um, tell us a little bit about your your members and their adoption of technology and and the preferences there. Well, it's really interesting that you mentioned worldwide. We meet on Zoom now. Last year we met every month. Now we're meeting every other month. And just last Sunday, which was Grandparents Day, we had a wonderful speaker and author of a new book called The Mindful Grandparent, How to Love Your Children's Children. And it's really about that intentionality. And two of the grandmas who joined the meeting on Sunday, one was from Australia and one was from Guatemala. And then we had grandmas from all over the country as well on the call. Uh, But we did initially meet in person at my home to start with, and then we branched out and met at other people's homes. And there is this need for grandmas to get together and just talk about all the issues, not just the joys, because the tagline of the Gaga Sisterhood is where grandmas bond, brag, and benefit. But mostly we're benefiting and we're really wanting to connect with other people who are in the same situation in life as we are, which is this grandparent stage. I love it. it, it this is great. Okay. Um, we've got two uh, comments and, um, and uh, there's another Donnie Davis in the audience. Uh, I think she, she, well, no, I think, you, you you may have shared uh, your your link because she has done some she's making some really great uh, comments and and um, the, the the whoever said I'm worried about our children today ARP has a lot of information on our grandchildren if you just throw in what your 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 name is into chat I'll make sure to change your name there um, but I want to address two very important topics um, and that is from her on uh on things like um suicide um and then barbara who's talking about and let me just read barbara's statement you're presenting the happy side understandably but i've seen the sad side our 31 year old daughter died of multiple causes 18 months ago and we've been taking care of her two children now four and a half and six Their father is also deceased. We have one more child who's married, but sadly doesn't seem to want children. 
taking care of these grandchildren while also grieving is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. And, and Barbara, I know all of our community members, you know, um, thoughts and heart and love go out to you here. So, um, but uh, I'm, I'm curious with Donnie and Carrie on your perspective of, I, I know one of the topics is, uh, one of the hot topics is grandparents raising grandchildren and Barbara's situation is, goes sort of beyond any of our dreams, you know, losing your child and now raising their grand, their grandchildren. Yeah. And this is, this is a topic that, um, you know, I think that being in the grandparenting space, you can't help but be, um, you know, really, really interested in. I'm not, um, I'm not at a place where I can share things that are useful for Barbara. And, um, but what I will say is that, and maybe you've connected with this organization already, but Generations United uh, is a phenomenal resource for what people are now calling grand families. And this is a situation where grandparents are raising uh, their grandchildren. And they just, they have beautiful uh, resources and webinars. And um, so I, I hope Barbara that you uh, will reach out to them um, and at least check out uh, their website if you haven't already. I think that, you know, one of the other things that I hear about is, and that sometimes people don't want to bring up uh, in these grandparenting discussions is estrangement. And so it's an you know, a very painful um, situation where you're not able to see your grandchildren uh, because the, your adult children, you know, won't let you, you've been estranged. And there are, um, again, tons of resources uh, for grandparents. If there are any grandparents on the line who are in that situation, uh, sometimes we don't want to necessarily say it if it's something that's being recorded, but I would encourage you to check out uh, Dr. Joshua Coleman. And so he has a wonderfully supportive webinar series, support group, like you can call him in. I think, I think he does this every Monday where you can just call in and ask questions. And he really does help in terms of a path to reconciliation. Uh, and then there's also a, um, a sociologist, Dr. Carl Pilmer. He wrote a book, I think it was called Fault Lines. Uh, and I really appreciate his book because I think it's actually just about the complexity of family. Uh, because I think that we think it can't happen to us. Uh, and then, you know, I hear from grandparents a lot who are in a situation around estrangement. And then finally, I talk about grandparenting grief. And this is really related to when you've, when you're at a distance, the relationship does not look like what you want it to be. Um, and it feels like a loss because you can't see your grandchildren uh, when you want to. And so there is, you know, yes, a lot of positives uh, to grandparenting, but I don't sugarcoat it in my membership uh, with members. We talk often about this, that there's a lot of grief associated uh, with grandparenting from a distance and the grandparenting role uh, in general. Wow. <laughs> I was trying to uh, get all those resources into chat that you talked about, but we can um, feel free to email me some of those and we'll make sure to post them next to the recording if they didn't get into the chat. But I, I love your suggestion of Generations United um, uh, as a resource for Barbara and, um, and you know, the um, hopefully there there might be some other folks that are in the audience that are raising grandchildren as well that you that could connect with Barbara that would be wonderful you know so let's uh, be be thinking about about that but the other topic that I think well, I, Pam... I also wanted to recommend oh sorry sorry yeah I just was looking in my grandparent library I wanted to recommend this book. I'm not sure if it's coming out backwards. Yep. No, it's Grandparents Raising Grandchildren, the, yeah. the sacred work. Sacred. And it's by uh, Elaine Williams. It's okay. a very helpful book on really the struggle of when you get to this point in your life where you expect retirement and, and joy and pleasure, and then you have this tremendous responsibility piled on with the grief, which is just unimaginable because we never want to lose our children. It's, or of course, grandchildren, it's just the wrong order. And so this book uh, was very touching and, and had a, has a lot of really good resources in it. 
and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can't track down that author to um, join us here for a future discussion because I think uh, this would be very important to dive in deeper for a whole hour. So um, hopefully some good resources there for um, for Barbara, and then. Um, uh, Let's see, uh, I highly recommend Donnie's Gaga Sisterhood. It provides extremely helpful information so you can be a fantastic, relevant, positive grandparent you want to be. Importantly, you will learn how to build healthy relationships with your grandparents, grandchildren's parents and navigate, avoid potential issues. Yeah, w would you say, both of you, that communication is probably one of the, the most challenging topics is being a grandparent or a grandparent's parent, a grandchild's parent. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think that it's always challenging to communicate in close relationships. It's very hard when there's conflict. It's especially in the moment, it's so challenging to try to just resolve an issue in the moment. But I think one of the things I have learned is you really need to learn how to say I'm sorry. And saying I'm sorry and really meaning it can open up and soften things a lot. And this is one of the things I've learned. And just as I've gotten older, it's, 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 uh, it's the key to opening a conversation that could be difficult. I'm sorry, I, I think, I feel like I've upset you or I feel like there's something wrong. Just start that conversation that way. That's that's great, um, great, great advice. Okay, let's see, um, we've got uh, some more questions coming in. Someone says, how do we measure parents' well-being? My daughter and her husband have three little ones, three, two, and six. Our son-in-law shut down since the youngest was born and won't communicate with us. Our our daughter does, but she but I feel she is carrying a heavy load. My husband is not welcome to visit them and hasn't met the youngest. Oh gosh, I mean, I'm, I didn't think I was going to be crying today. Um, again, this is a communication issue, but any words of wisdom for this? challenging situation where the uh the grandchildren's parents are are shutting down yeah well and you know i have to tell you i always say that in the long distance grandparent society we laugh and we cry and uh, you know people come on to i have monthly zoom calls as part of this membership and i always let them know that tears are welcome because they they're surprised uh that once they start talking about these issues how emotional they are uh, but from the very first call we have cried together and laughed together. I think that one of the, and you know, I talk about this with grandparents, is that sometimes, um, sometimes, and I'm not sure if you're if this um, particular attendee is at a at a distance or not, but one of the things that can happen in families uh, with small children is that you know you kind of probably are correctly thinking that something's going on, um, but the parents retreat a little bit uh, because it's hard to share uh, with your parents. Uh, with your in-laws that something's wrong, uh, whether that is in your marriage or whether it's maybe you're having a, you know, a behavioral issue with a child. And so there's this period of time where it's like everyone knows something's going on. Um, and it's very difficult to know when to kind of tap in and say, I'm here for you. I, I feel that something's going on because sometimes parents need to figure some things out first uh, in their own family unit before they're ready to share. Uh, so I think that just continually being there, connecting with the kids, um, and then, you know, it's it's really hard to say, but you know, you kind of end up knowing the moment uh, when you can actually address it. Because I do think that, you know, we need to have more conversations. I know that there's a lot of, there are definitely pieces of advice that are like, zip it, don't talk to the parents, you know, you don't want to rock the boat. And I have recommended to grandparents before to do that in certain situations, like if you're dealing with a daughter-in-law who's quite difficult as an example, um, because these are the stories of estrangement, right? Where something happened with an in-law. Um, and that's why I think everybody should read about estrangement because it really just is about kind of 
the fragility of relationships and, you know, how they can kind of go south. But I would say that, you know, if you're sensing something, you know, something's going on and that you're able to be there for your daughter during this and be ready for when she's ready to open up, that's beautiful for her. Well, great words of wisdom. And I have to say your combination of um, uh, gerontology and um, child psychology, it, you can see where those skills are, are really blended together in these relationships here. Um, One now, thing I she, wanted to add to that yep. is uh, it's very important to empathize. And I think you're sort of alluding to that, Carrie, when you say what you just said, that parents don't want advice. It's the biggest uh, mistake that we grandparents can make in thinking, oh, we know what everything is about because we've lived longer than you have. But that's the last thing they want. What they want is for you to really understand this must be so hard for you right now. And just say that. It, I can tell that you're having a hard time. And if you want to talk about it, I'm happy to listen. But empathize, empathize, empathize is what I always remind grandparents to do. Man, yeah. And, you know, like I'm drawing a parallel to, to Barbara's um, just heartbreaking story of her her child dying and she's raising a grandchild and then uh this situation where there's this estrangement there's there's definitely some parallels there you know in 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 both of these relationships um that that is also the really the the comment that we've been talking about she did or he or she did say that this is a long distance um relationship and the youngest child is six months um now this is a really good uh question comment um and it's how how do you help your grandparents how do you help grandparents at a distance understand lgbtq ia plus issues with their grandkids what resources do you recommend about non-binary and trans grandkids and then when there is dementia and grandparents can't remember the pronouns, man, what a what, what a very important topic for all of us today. But uh, but thank you for the person that shared that question. I would just um, in, in reference to the first question, there is a phenomenal mother who uh, blogs about this very issue and talks about it. Um, and she she's actually she started this company called Mabel's Labels. I'll see if I can find the link to what she writes about now. Uh, but she was on uh, a podcast called Go To Grandma. And so this is actually a Canadian podcast, but she has international guests uh, with Kathy Buckworth. And she spoke about one of the podcast issues. Uh, she actually addressed um, this issue. And I feel like also uh, probably Emily Morgan, who has a podcast called The Grand Life. Um, I suspect that she would have addressed this as well. Um, so that would give you two different resources to reach out to. And Steve, I know you're over there uh, madly, like typing, not madly, but just busily typing. I'm happy to pop those links into the chat as well um, and circle back to that. And um, when it comes to uh, dementia and grandparents, you know, um, so we have actually faced some of this uh, in my family and there are, I have some wonderful children's books. So I don't know how old the grandchildren are in this situation. Maybe if the attendee could let us know, um, but there are some really beautiful uh, children's books. And one of them I think is called Grandpa Green. Um, but I'll, I'll pop a, a resource uh, to somebody who writes about um, books, the children's books. I think it's called, a oh gosh, I can't remember her name now. ABCs of uh, books and she highlights different books that are available to address issues um, around aging. So let me have a really quick look for that as well, and I'll pop that into the chat. I hope and that's I want to add. I want to add something on that same topic. It's so interesting that that one of the chats came up on this topic because my speaker for November is an author who's going to be talking about gender identity. And I personally was interested in finding a speaker on this topic because my oldest grandchild is non-binary and told me 
three years ago that they wanted to be called they. And so all these years I've been calling my granddaughter, Juliet, a she. Now I have to get used to using this awkward pronoun, which is they for a, a singular person. But I'm really interested in the topic because I think it is coming to the forefront in among a lot of grandparents. I know three or four grandparents in my organization who have trans grandchildren and learning the language and the uh, understanding what this is all about is so important to our generation. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm currently asking my grandchild, what are some points that they think grandparents should know about gender fluidity, gender identity? This is great. And I see, um... Jennifer Brown is in the audience. She speaks on this topic and has been fantastic. She referenced pflag.org as, as a resource. Um, Donnie, I dropped in the details on your November 13th discussion. How do people join your discussion? Um, I have a meetup group on, if you go to my website. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Sorry, I have the volume. That's actually my dad calling, so I'll oh, just. That's a, the, the, okay, but uh, so on you know, your if you go to my website, gagasisterhood.com, mm -hmm. there's a join page, and you can and you go to my meetup group, and the meet if you join my meetup. Okay, then you, you get, get invited to all yes. of those events. Yep. Okay, all right. So I uh, I'm dropping that in because uh, some folks might want to tune in. Um, the uh, the person that was uh, talking about the um, uh, gender question, it's a teenager um, who they were referring to. Um, let me get back to some of the things that were here in our um, uh, discussion. And we've got um, also, some Gail says also if parents okay think about giving oh oh talking about um gifts uh if parents okay think about giving a piece of stock or something that an older child might be interested in like a share of Mattel D Disney especially good if that uh stock pays a dividend yeah there I I think you know one of the things the the cool thing about the gift giving discussion with grand um children is and and this is true for my mom there's the gifts that they unwrap and they're excited to see under the christmas tree but there's the experience and traveling with your grandchildren and um you know the stock and so, something that could build a dialogue hey how's the stock doing uh what have you and and have something in the future that they can remember you by as well um any thoughts on on that topic of gifts and traveling or anything like that that uh, your members have have stumbled into? Well, I set up 529 accounts for all of my grandchildren. And my oldest is now using that money. And it's been growing for a long time. So it's come in real handy for college expenses. Mm hmm. No. Yeah. That's uh, I'm the beneficiary of that with a college age kid right now. I'm very grateful to my my um, to our parents for for helping with that. Um, I would say so. Just in terms of thinking about gifts and um, teaching kids about money, especially for kind of a teenage grandchildren, uh, one thing that I and, and actually younger grandchildren because my dad has done this uh, with my son and he's only seven, um, but it is about I'm giving them some money, uh, giving them some money that they can buy themselves something with, but that they can also donate uh, to a particular cause. And it's been a really beautiful interaction between them because they've talked about where that might go, uh, you know, why we, you know, why we kind of um, engage in this type of activity, why. Um, so all kinds of interesting conversations from a distance can happen um, when you do something like that. Great. Okay, some some great words of wisdom are, are coming through here. And I think this from Pam McGraw, I renamed you, but I'm, I'm not positive if I did it right. Um, she says, two key things to consider when interacting with your grandchildren's parents. One, zip it 
And two, did they ask? Uh, I guess, you, you know, this uns unsolicited advice is not welcomed by most people, I think. Uh, so great, great that. And then someone says, uh, praise your adult children parent whenever you can. Y you know, it, I, I think, you know, this goes back to parenting. It's sort of like when you listen, to, when I listen to what comes out of my mouth, most of it is being critical with my kids and trying, but in, in a loving way, I want them to be better, but we just were, we need to put our empathy hat on to understand, you know, you know, none of us really like to be constantly uh, provided critical information. You know, one of the things that you mentioned in promoting this event was why do our grandchildren need us now more than ever? I think this is, this is a harsh world to grow up in right now. And anything we can do to be cheerleaders or sounding boards for our grandchildren. I had a funny experience just a couple days ago. My 15 year old granddaughter call, uh, texted me and said, can you talk? And I said, sure. And I found out that she had first wanted to talk to her mom, but her mom was working. Then she wanted to talk to some friends, but they weren't available. Then she wanted to talk to her si sister who wasn't available. And so I was fourth string, but I was happy to be the listener. And what she wanted to do was just vent about how disappointed she felt about the interaction that had happened in homeroom that morning when she gave her campaign speech for community representative or something and and so I was I was delighted that the others weren't available and that I got a chance to be the listener and of course every time I listen to my grandchildren or talk to my grandchildren I try to be a cheerleader and I try to point out their strengths and their gifts to them the um the, that's that's wonderful and you know I just it just dawned on it just dawned on well that's quite an honor donnie i mean like um and and i know that that just made your day your week your month when she called you like that um can i jump in really quickly i just absolutely quick point uh, because the interesting thing about this is that um there's something called affectionate communication and it really is about encouraging it's it's a lot of other things but one of the things is about encouraging like encouraging words to your grandchildren supporting them being there for them and what researchers have found is that when grandchildren are older and they rate this affectionate communication to be higher they have closer relationships with their grandchildren and so you know this is what i mean that there is like a great amount of research about this stuff um, and it really is just about, you know, when you're sending an encouraging text or just a note to them, it's, it is landing for them, right? It is something that is, um, you know, that, that's happening and that's meaningful. And so don't stop and don't give up. Great. Uh, let's see. Susan says, um, as a former member of Carrie's long distance grandparent group, I can highly recommend this group, providing ideas, inspiration, and understanding on long distance relationships I have with my two grandparents. Um, Kara, we we shared a little bit about um, how to join the Gaga Sisterhood, but Carrie, what are some of the things that people can expect if they join your group? Um, so you can go find out more about the Long Distance Grandparent Society. If you go to my website, there is a tab there called the LDG Society. Members renamed it because the Long Distance Grandparent Society sounded too long. Um, so we're the LDG Society. Every single month, I send out what I think of as a digital subscription box. And so you get this uh, PDF that is filled with mail to send uh, with video chat ideas. Um, and then we meet every single, oh, you've got the page up. You're so good, Steve. Um, and then every single month we meet as a group. We're actually meeting later today. Uh, we come together, we do a grand mingle, it's called. Uh, where grandparents break out into rooms and talk about either a question that I provide or something that's challenging. We also have a grand Zoom chat, so two meetings a month, uh, where you can kind of just bring any challenge that you're having to the table and that we all discuss. And then I bring in a guest expert uh, every single month um, to talk about, and those are recorded. And so 
when you join, you actually get access to now, I think, 24 connection packs. We have been going for two years. It is a beautiful community of very intentional grandparents who are really supporting uh, one another. So I welcome you to check it out. Or if you're wondering if this is right for you, then email me. It's for those of you of grandchildren ages two to 10. I'm speaking really quickly because I'm seeing that we're coming up to the top of the hour. Ooh, thank you for looking at the clock. Uh, this is so um, we've got some more comments that I'd like to go through, but um, uh, if I think that Donnie and Carrie can stay on for a little bit longer, and I just want to remind everybody that this is recorded, so if you need to jump off, uh, you can jump back and see the recording, uh, copy the chat, and I'll have other resources as well. Um, you know, one, it, this goes back to sort of finding support groups and we've got two right here with the long distance uh caregiving and um gaga sisterhood but one resource that i want to kind of share with you you all that has been very surprising to me as a great place to find information is reddit and so what you see here is this is a reddit group on grandparenting here and it's amazing some of the you know like somebody posted solo grandparenting here for the first time and people made you, you know are 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 making very thoughtful uh, it's thoughtful comments uh to help uh to, to help this person the other thing when i did that quick search on grandparenting on reddit <laughs> something that we all might be very interested in is because Reddit in general skews to a younger audience. There's a lot of kids talking about their grandparents on these threads. And it's sort of like getting to pull the curtain back at the perception of us in front of, um, of grandchildren in general. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, let's see, Bill uh, asks, would like to know what impact the spike in housing costs has had on families. Have young parents and their kids been forced to flee high cost markets and make the decision to return to hometown to be closer to their grandparents? For years, the housing community has been talking about generation, a generation being priced out. Have new intergenerational households reversed that trend during the pandemic? Um, great, great question, Bill. So I would say that, um, so I'll, I'll just speak anecdotally first, and then I'll give you a bit of research about this, but, you know, anecdotally in, because I deal with long distance grandparents have members and uh, people have left the membership to very good news that they're, that the children have moved back home to be closer to families. And so we are seeing this happening. Um, there's also, I know here in Canada, and I just saw a recent report um, that came out of the Vanier Institute, an increase in multi-generational households. And I believe it's the same trend. Uh, I believe it's the same trend in the US um, because I think I read something on Encore.org about it, but absolutely an increase in uh, multi-general households is, is happening. So that, that's all I know about that topic. <laughs> and anecdotally for me, I would say two of my Gaga members live in multi-generational homes with their children and grandchildren. Yeah, and and I think it all it makes sense. I mean, from everybody's situation is different, but I do believe that statistics are showing that generational houses, multi generational houses, are on the rise. Um, let's see. Um, question or comment: My oldest grandchild is a twenty one year old man dating a young woman who is a severe troublemaker. And um, my daughter directed me to be the person who pretends I don't know what's going on so that he has an avenue of communication if and when he realizes who this young woman really is. So I play that part. Um, you know, I would say that my grand, my mom plays a role like that in our family too. And it's absolutely wonderful that my, my children have somebody that they can confide in in a way, an adult other than my, um, uh, me and my wife. However, I will say, and I mean, this is anecdotally too, and just my family, I, I tell my mom, you know, sort of, you don't need to share any of these conversations. I'm, unless there's 
a, an element of harm or something like that because I want there to be trust between between them. Uh, have you have you all heard similar sort of um, relationships, Carrie and Donnie? Yeah, and I think again, I would I would direct you to Joshua Coleman's site. Um, around estrangement and also, again, Carl Pilmer's book, Fault Lines, because uh, I know that Dr. Coleman has an entire, uh, I think, webinar about this topic, uh, you know, when there is a, you know, girlfriend or boyfriend um, that is challenging and how to navigate that situation and, and like really wonderful stuff um, that I think you'll find really useful. Great. Um, and uh, let's see. Got a plug here from Peter about the Village to Village Network. I mean, again, in the villages, the villages, the village movement, if you're not familiar, check out his, his post. But I, I urge village members to collaborate on the topic of grandparenting because you're in the same neighborhood and it's a great discussion topic and, you, you know, uh, th things like that. The, um, uh, let's see, um, Okay, uh, I think we got through all the questions and comments and uh, by no surprise this this discussion has exceeded my expectations because it we 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 approached a lot of elements of grandparenting today, didn't we? We did there and are it does, so many. Yeah, it is it is a very complex topic and relationship, um, but you know one that I think you can see we all feel pretty passionately about. So feel free to reach out to either Donnie or myself about the topic if you have any questions. We can generally point you to a resource if we are not providing that resource. Uh, Donnie's been around for a long time, nineteen years, <laughs> uh, and I've been on the scene for a while. So happy to direct you to someone that can help. Th th thank you, and um, thank the two of you. But but really. Thank you to the folks in the community and in the audience today. Your comments and questions and driving this dialogue in the directions that we went in is so invaluable. And it really is what gets me charged up about these discussions. No matter what the topic we throw out there, uh, the, our, our community does not fail to engage in, in thoughtful discussion. So, um, Everybody will have the recording. You'll have contact information for Donnie, Carrie, the resources we talked about. By all means, reach out to me if you want us to dive into uh, any of the topics in more detail. Uh, I would love to host more of these grandparenting discussions. And um, uh, thanks so much, you all. Thank you, Carrie and Donnie. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Okay, see you all soon.